rising sun complete, competing with the dark clouds. We're up high this morning already, relatively speaking to where we normally are. And we can keep climbing if you want, if you're ready to come with me. So I think we're going to see less of the sun in a little bit, and then we'll have to keep our eyes open. There's a wonderful tree right here beside me in full bloom, different kind of bloom. See, these are not normal leaves. Maybe we can go over closer and check it out. You know, Moses went to the burning bush. He got closer to check it out. <laughs> I'm not in the mood to take off my shoes here. Sorry, 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 sorry. I'm balancing three or four things here in my mind. There we are. The little leaves are very small. And it looks like it's in, in full bloom here. And there's tons of them, you know? It's this abundance. The abundance. Let's look at it on this side of the light. So that, uh, we're not looking counter to the light. Isn't that interesting? There can be a lot of light, but you mightn't be seeing it well because you're not seeing it from the side of the light, but against the light. Huh, that's a nice thought. Understanding life with the light, not against the light. It's amazing, it's a small bush, you know, a lot of little stems down here. And yet it's an infinity of, almost like, I'm sure you could count them if you had <laughs> the patience to do it, but just imagine the, the, it's not that high either. I mean, it's just, let's see, I'm probably about four or five feet above the level of the ground where the roots are down there. And, then it's another maybe three or four feet, well, no, six feet above me. So it's it's not a, an amazingly big tree, it's like a big bush. <laughs> it's just amazing. I think we can be filled with wonder at the volume, the, the number. And then if we were to go in to look at the little petals, if you could call them petals, and then the pollen grains, the infinity of our world. This must be made to get our minds to say, okay, it's a little bit beyond me. I didn't make all this. <laughs> There's more genius involved here than my little hard disk. And then there are more kinds of infinities around. The sun is still hiding, but it'll be coming out a little clearer sooner. Temperatures today are going to be in the high 30s or in the high 70s, translated into Fahrenheit. And then we have more infinities here. Look at all these infinities here. So let's head up here a little bit. It's good to make a little noise so with the walking and everything so the snakes have time to disappear if there are any. There was a snake the other day in one of the olive trees. So are you ready for the walk? Let's head up here. I marvel at the abundance again, the amount of flowers. This is the valley, where, a little valley here where we saw the, the wild 
um, boar going up, running up here, a whole family of them, a long time ago. I don't know if it was back in September when it was. We were down closer to the road. Look at this is another, this is one of the latest bloomers. It doesn't seem to have any sign of life at all yet. I wouldn't say that it's not going to bloom. We should never say this about any late bloomer, even in their 70s. There's a blooming of holiness and godliness happening in the lives of many people in their last breath. There are great stories of people in prison. Oh, I forgot to put in the microphone. Just give me a second here. Sorry about this, people. I'm putting on the microphone and I'm watching everything. There we are. So let's keep on heading up here. Here in the wild. I lost my train of thought there. It can happen at six o'clock in the morning, you know. Or maybe it's about 6.15 now. Our familiar thistles. There are some here really in bloom. And then we have these other little flowers down here. These have opened up very nicely to welcome the rising sun. Opening up to welcome the rising sun. That's kind of a pattern of description of what's happening in the readings. I'm going uh, westward and I have the camera facing eastward so I have to watch where I'm going but you keep an eye on the camera that is properly focused okay. getting a nice view here. Just swing around here so you can see. This piece of Mount Arbel is blocking the view of Magla but you can see the boats down here in the at the dock. And for those of you who are familiar you see another dock over there that's empty. And that's where, that's Nofkin Osar, where the boats go out with the pilgrims. Sea of Galilee Hotel. So that's where the, um, the boat that was discovered dredged out of the mud 
30 years ago or so. Then we have the Mount of Beatitudes, in Capernaum. And then let's wheel around here to see where we're going because this is a different angle on Mount Arbel. We're up here a bit higher. I wonder if we'll get up to that rock face today. It depends on what we find along the way. Look at this one of our late bloomers. Look where it is now. And the sun has disappeared. So let's keep going here. And here we have the bees that are busy with these beautiful flowers. Be a bee and not a fly. Look for the nectar and not the the muck hill. The human misery. Look for the beauty, the goodness. The diamond that's being formed under the pressure, under the suffering, under the with the endurance over time, a lot of heat. More of our late bloomers here. This is just one carpet of, of flower, of color, of design. You know, I don't mind going uphill. Physically, it's more strenuous in one way, but it's easier than going downhill. Isn't that interesting? So I'm going to swing over here to the right because in order to go back, I'm not going to go down this slope here. It's just too steep downward. So I'll, I think I'm going to swing off to the right here. You know, we couldn't have walked through here a month ago. Couldn't see where you'd be going. It was all high-grown vegetation, waist high. But now the cattle have done their work and also the vegetation is declining. That's one of the reasons I'm up here today because we're in for a lot of heat now the next couple of weeks. And this will very change very, very much in a short period of time. I want to head over this direction, okay? So the readings are are quite inspiring. And the first reading, Peter's speech after Pentecost is very similar to what's happening in the Gospel. You know, Today is the third Sunday of Easter, but we're actually still on the first Sunday evening with the Gospel account in Luke's Gospel. After the disciples come back from Emmaus and they're telling their story, after they heard the story of the Jerusalemites telling them that Jesus has appeared to Simon 
and they're telling their story, how they met him along the way. And then they react with so much surprise that Jesus appears among them. And we might be a little bit judgmental about that and we'd say, well, <laughs> haven't they realized yet, you know? But it's the same day. It's the same day. And we human beings, we don't have an easy time switching gears and fundamental things. And we have spent a full two weeks contemplating and pondering the Easter happening, the resurrection of Christ. And so we've, we've worked our way through it already, even this year, you know, and we've done it so many times in the past. But these guys are on the very first day of the resurrection. It's night time. So maybe it's 14, 15 hours or more since they have, but it's not 24 hours, okay? And it's probably not 20 hours. So it's less than that. And they're still struggling very much. They just can't believe what they're hearing. Hey, we got a nice spot up here. So look at this, there's a path even along here. You can see it. So I'm going to follow this path and that's going to bring me back this way. Because cows don't go down steep cliffs, so this is a good indicator that I can get back this way and have a more, oh, look at the deer. There are deer here. Look, going up by the rocks there. See the white tail just disappeared? And if there's one, there's probably another one. Don't talk, okay? Let's go quietly. But the vegetation is very thick, so who knows? That's where the deer went. We don't want to, oh, there's a wild boar here. Wants to come on camera. Hey, this is the closest I've got to a wild boar. Well, not really, there was another one about this distance some months ago. Is that a grizzly bear or a wild boar? Well, it's clearly a wild boar. And it was a big one. Hey, that's pretty neat. So what time is it now? It's about 6.30, so it's about 20 minutes into the video. We got our wild boar. Why don't we just stop here and maybe some more will appear or some others, some other wildlife. Well, there's tons of wildlife, it's just what's sensational, you know? It's all wildlife, except for some cows up here. I'm going to put you down here. I'm going to lift up the stand of the tripod a little bit. It's all good. And there we have some of our thistles in bloom right here. These white spots. Let's look at that more closely here. You see the, the seeds are ready to fly. They don't want to fly. They're still clinging to the nest. Isn't that nice? Because there's a little breeze and there it got stuck again on the, uh, mm. the empty thistle, the one, the sister of the mother. There are some birds cackling back here, bigger birds. So we're up here and there's nobody around except a wild boar looking at us somewhere, seeing what our next, next move is, and also a couple of deer looking at us, seeing what our next move is, but I don't know exactly where they are. 
and we'll just enjoy a few minutes here with the readings. So one of the big things that stand out in the readings today is the similarity between the first and second reading on the following point that the scriptures point to a divine plan prepared for centuries, millennia, which is culminating in Jesus, in his person. And these are not people from outside the Jewish people. These are people from inside the Jewish people who are totally well versed in the scriptures. So they know what they're talking about. And it's not just something that they know about, like an encyclopedia or a professor who did his doctorate or his master's on some subject. It's about people who pray the scriptures. The scriptures are in their hearts. It's not just about people that have an epic story like the Norsemen have or the Irish have about legends in their prehistory. This is about concrete history and it's also not just a story, it's actually their prayer life. It's their relationship with the Creator, with the Almighty. And these writings, which were kind of like, you know, a good novel. I just finished Moby Dick, by the way, yesterday. And uh, I just had about, I was about 30 minutes, the last 30 minutes of the recording. And uh, a fascinating ending. I won't spoil it on you. But anyway, you know, there's so many clues all the way along. And then the good writer tells you the story resolves at the last moment or the last chapter or the second last chapter. And in a way the scripture is like this, that there's a lot of things you don't know where that's going to pan out, how it's going to be, what's going to be implied. And now that Jesus is risen from the dead, they can understand the text from Hosea which says on the third day he will rise again and be among the living. So maybe in Osea's mind it had one concrete mean, meaning, but now it has a much um, more concrete, uh, tangible understanding in Christ. And we see it in Psalm 119. Uh, let me let me go back there and find that for you. Just give me a second here. I think I have it here. Oh, you know, I don't. I have it on the phone that's t transmitting. So I don't have the text prepared here. So, but it's in Psalm 119. You can find it yourselves. And it's a prayer really saying, God, open my mind to understand the marvels of your law. And law there is Torah. It's the books of, of Moses. So open my mind to understand the marvels of your teaching. And here we see Jesus opening their minds to understand the scriptures. So they've reached a point when, like we're reading a novel or a book, and we see how it all came together. All the loose threads are woven into one beautiful, complete fabric. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name. Again, this is, we're reading from the Gospel of Luke here, the end of the Gospel of Luke. And uh, this is very interesting because it's not calling to justice. You know, after some wars, there are trials of the war crimes people, right? And there's a great will to prove and convict them of their guilt and to punish them for their guilt. But here it's a completely different ending. It is that they will open their hearts to accept this truth and repent, even if they did it half unawares, but there's always that mixture in human action. Some things we do that have results we intend them, and other things we do, good and bad, uh, do much better or much worse than we intended, but we have responsibility in executing and carrying them out. So there's, um, there's a degree of responsibility that only God can judge. 
And so there's a call to mercy. Open your hearts for mercy and forgiveness. And this is the preaching of Peter. The Gospel is reading us as an account of Easter Sunday evening and, priest, and Peter is preaching after Pentecost. So he has absorbed all of this and he himself in his, the light of his own failures and denials has been given mercy by Christ and now he can be unlike that bad servant who went out and throttled his body for a smaller debt after he was forgiven the bigger debt. Peter has learned that lesson and he's now saying there's a path for you to be involved. You can come back and be involved. You don't have to be considered an enemy. You don't have to look at us cross-eyed and say, what's going to happen to me now? No. What's going to happen to you is mercy. And this is an extraordinary story ending, really, a story ending, which is really a story beginning because it's a message the whole world still needs today. Even after 2,000 years, we're just warming up the motors to bring that message more and more to bear in the hearts of so many broken and wounded people, people who have done things that they deeply regret. It's really amazing. What a story, what a message of life, of hope, of joy. In that sense, the second reading is very helpful because it um, brings that to bear very much. That we have a path of forgiveness completely open. Imagine today having a path of complete victory over cancer or over the problems we have with this uh, world situation for the last 14, 15 months, that this disease just doesn't count anymore, it's wiped out. That we have once again freedom of movement, we can move forward. That's the message, that's the joy of Easter, the joy of the risen Lord. People, our time has run out, but I thank you for climbing up the mountain here this morning. We didn't get up to the rock face, but we got surely a beautiful view, so let me give you one circle before we say goodbye. So we're going to look over here. It's amazing how hazy it is, and it's going to be so hot today. Look at the mountains just bordering Lebanon. From the top of those mountains, you're looking into Lebanon. There's a road up there. And then we we're passing by Mount Hermon in that direction, but it's not visible. And then we're looking by the Golan here, and just beyond that, all that's Syria. And then down here, we're looking at Jordan at the very end there. Just look at the end of the sea, and down there beyond Tiberias, that's Jordan. And here we are, Mount Arbel, here in Israel, here at the Sea of Galilee. This rocky area is just like my home area, the Burren, B-U-R-R-E-N, in County Clare. It's a very rocky limestone area. It has a lot of wildflowers as well, very famous area for botanists. So now you got the, the round tour. And I'll just say goodbye to you. God bless you. Have a blessed Sunday and a wonderful week. May, may your hearts be filled with joy. We got a little bit of sunrise. See you later, alligators. <laughs>